Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I'm Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help you get your day off to a great start. And the way we do that is by taking time together to read the Word of God, to read Scripture together, and to be in prayer together. And so what I've always asked is that every morning you would take the time to read one chapter of Scripture with me. And so most recently, we have been working our way through the Gospel of Luke. And so today, we come to Luke chapter 8. And so what I would ask is that when we're all done our little lesson, that you would take a moment, a few moments, and read through the full of Luke chapter 8. So, you know, it's a fairly full chapter, some good stories in there. I think you can really enjoy it. Now, for the purpose of our lesson this morning, we're going to look at just a portion of that. We will be looking at verses 36 through 39. So if you have a Bible handy, which I hope maybe you do, or if not, pull it up on your phone, or if that's the way you prefer to do it, use your Bible app, and join me in Luke chapter 8, beginning in verse 36. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region of Gennesaret asked Jesus to leave them because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and he left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. When you read this story, when you read the whole chapter, right, you're going to see that this is the culmination of a much longer story. It is the story of the man who was demon-possessed. He was possessed by many, many demons. And when Jesus drives out this legion of demons, he sends them into a herd of pigs. Now, this is a story that maybe you've heard before. I've certainly taught on it before. And usually, when I look at this story, when I read this story, the part I am drawn to, the part I tend to focus on, is the healing and the pigs. Right, because there's something kind of unusual about that, right? It kind of catches our eye. It's not that common what Jesus did here. He doesn't do it anywhere else in the scriptures, right? And so often that's the area of focus on. But this morning, and it's so interesting how God works and sometimes draws our attention to different things. This morning, as I was reading it, I found myself drawn to the very end of the story, the part that we just read. So, this man has just been healed in this amazing, extraordinary way, right? This legion of demons living within him, really ruining his life, right? And so suddenly this man has been healed. His life has been restored, right? Prior to this, he lived in the tombs. He had no family, really. He had no friends. He was not able to really even have a life. He couldn't work. He just, it was, it was a terrible demon-possessed existence. But suddenly, now he is free of all of that which had controlled his life for so long. And so now for this man, the question becomes, now what? What do I do now? For years, all he's ever known is this isolated existence of demon possession. And, and so now he's freed of it. Now what do I do? What do I do with this new life that I have received from Jesus? And so his immediate thought is, I'm going to start following Jesus. Wherever he goes, I will go. If there's anything I can do to help him, I will serve him. I will travel him. I will listen to his teachings. I will just absorb and soak up all that he has for me. This is what I want to do. I'm just going to follow Jesus around. That's what I'm going to do with this new life that he has given me. 
But Jesus says, no. He turns him away. And he says, instead, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go back to your home, back to your neighborhood, back to your town, and just start telling everyone what God has done for you. And you know what? I think that's what we should all be doing. Listen, if God has been good to us, if he has blessed our lives in any way, if he has freed us, healed us, forgiven us, changed us, we should share that. We should tell the world what God has done. Now, we may not all have been demon-possessed in the way that this man was, but if we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, if we've welcomed him into our hearts, then we have been the recipients of extraordinary grace and unconditional love. And we have been through a transformation of our own. In truth, when we accept Jesus, he changes our lives. And it may not be as visible or as pronounced as this, this demon-possessed man's change was, but nonetheless, all of us are changed. There is a transformation that takes place. And the very best thing we can do is to share that, to tell others what Jesus has done for us, because when we share our story, it helps others to see that they can experience this same powerful transformation in their own lives. This is how we help others to know Jesus, by sharing our story of what he has done in our lives. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, I thank you for this extraordinary story, this amazing healing that takes place for this demon-possessed man. And I know that the part of the story that we often are drawn to focus on is the healing itself and, and this situation with the, the pigs and the way the community responds and all of that. But Lord, today, help us to see the end result. Help us to see what God brings from that because ultimately what it becomes is this man becomes the town's best evangelist. Having been transformed by God, he goes out into his community and begins to tell everyone what God has done for him. Help us, Lord, to see the ways that you've been at work in our lives and to tell everyone what you have done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.